So hi folks, it's a beautiful day here, it's about 22-23 degrees in the greenhouse. Plants are looking lovely and it's time for me to do my nutrient changes. And um, I thought that would be a good time to introduce you to the project that I've been working on. I've mentioned it a few times but I haven't given it a formal introduction. And it's the project that I'm calling the Mixologist, which is um, to automate all my nutrient changes. Or to certainly help out with it, I'll, I'll show you what I've got in mind. So whenever I'm doing my nutrient changes, the first thing I do, usually first thing in the morning, is I fill this barrel up with water and I start it bubbling away and it's got a 500 watt heater in there to warm it up. So I drain out my nutrient tanks and I pump in the right amount of water from the blue barrel and then I set about adding my nutrients in. And I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different things that I need to worry about adding into that mixture. And um, you know, it's quite a complicated recipe. I have my cheat sheet to help me with the recipe. But um, you know, it'd be nice to be able to just push a button and get the right mix out. So that's what the idea with the mixologist is. I, I want to hook up these nine different things um, to nine different pumps and have a computer switch the pumps on and off at the right time to get me the nutrient balance I want, whether it's flora or vega balance, I, I want to be able to dial in the uh, strength of the solution and I want to be able to dial in the pH and just have a machine that will mix all of that for me. So with nine different things to dispense, the first thing I figured I'd want would be nine little nutrient dosing pumps. Um, these are what are called peristaltic pumps, they dispense rather conveniently one millilitre per second. Um, I'll pull one apart and show you what's inside it. So I said I'd give you a look at one of these peristaltic pumps so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn this one inside out on itself and these things are actually really really simple but still I think they're a marvellous piece of engineering whoever thought this up because all it is inside is it's got let's put it to pieces there we go um, you see that so we've got these three plastic rollers on this plastic carrier here. No gearing, nothing like that. The motor shaft sits in the middle of those three rollers. If I can get it to go into the gap. There we go. It sits in the middle of those three rollers. So the rollers run around on the motor shaft. That makes them turn around. They squash that silicon tubing and the silicon tubing then pulls the liquid through. So I'm just going to stick a bit of an old biro up there so I can lengthen the hose on it. I'll drop that in there. Um, I'm not sure which way round this is going to need to be. Let me just get my wiring right. The wrong way. Now, one of the nice things about these pumps, because of the way they work, is that you don't need to prime them because they're just as happy to suck air as they are liquid. So, um, this pump dispenses pretty much bang on one millilitre per second. I've timed it all the way up to 100 seconds and it said 100 millilitres on this jug. So any errors, very minimal on that. But I can use that to suck the liquid out of the bottles and drop it into the uh, nutrient reservoir as I mix things up. So I thought they were pretty much perfect for that job. And um, very easy to service. This silicon tubing does wear out but you can see how easy they are to get to pieces. and. Uh, there we go, pump rebuilt the right way around again. No problem at all. But my basic thinking is I'll use half litre bottles, which is why I've bought all of this bottled water. Um, I'll use nine of these half litre bottles to contain the nine different nutrients. And then the hose from this will feed into a peristaltic pump, which can then pump the nutrients through. Of course, if we've got the pumps, we need a way of turning them on and off. So I got a couple of these eight-way opto-isolated relay boards, um, which are more than up to the job. They were really cheap on eBay. Um, curiously, they use, if you remember that toaster I took to pieces, um, same relays that were in that toaster. So I've even got a couple of spares for that. Um, 
But yes, nine pumps, there's eight channels on each of that, so I've got two of these relay boards to wire together. Um, the next thing I thought was that, uh, well, it would be rather nice to see what's in each channel, because I don't necessarily want to always have to put the same nutrients in the same bottles, and I may change from using canner branded nutrients at some point. So I wanted the displays to be configurable, and I wanted it to show me what was going on in each of the nine channels, and count up the nutrients as it dispenses from different channels. So as the programme progresses, I can see how many of each it's put in. Um, so I've got these nine displays. Now you'll notice that these two aren't working at the moment, and that's because my little microcontroller on here only has 16 kilobytes of RAM, and each one of these displays takes up one kilobyte, and um, I ran out of memory when I tried to turn on the eighth one. Um, these were dirt cheap off eBay. These were £2.30 each, something like that. And they hook up on an I2C bus, and you can choose one of two different addresses for each of the displays. They can be address 7, 8 or 7A, are the two options. Um, which meant I could only hook two on. So I've run everything through this analog multiplexer. It's a CD4067 4-way to 16-way analog multiplexer, which is basically an electronically controlled switch, so that I can switch the I2C bus, which is on these two wires, and switch which pair of displays I want it to go to. And that one at the end obviously isn't part of a pair, it's all on its own. But that's how I've got, uh, well, seven displays running off a microcontroller so far. Um, the other thing I was thinking was that once I've run the program and said, yes, dispense me 10 litres at an EC of 1.4 and a pH of 6.1, I may come along and I might want to just tweak the balance a bit and add a bit of particular nutrients. So I thought it'd be nice to have a push button above each of these screens that will run the pump. And um, I've chosen these rather nice blue LED ring buttons. I just think they look pretty. Uh, so I'm going to have those above each switch, and if you push the button, it'll run the pump. <coughs> now, the next thing I thought was, <coughs> well, if I've got this thing dispensing the nutrients into a container, um, obviously I still have to manually either tell it how much water's in the container already, or measure it out for it and um, pump it out afterwards. And I thought it'd be really nice to actually just automate all of that as well, so I could say hey, give me 10 litres, and it would know how to pump 10 litres of water into the container to begin with. So I bought these flow sensors, and these have got a little plastic wheel inside that moves around with the liquid. Um, they're supposed to give, I think it was 450 counts per litre. I think it was something like that. Um, but it's like the um, speed detectors you get on computer fans. It's the same sort of thing as that. So I've hooked up this flow sensor to a power supply into the oscilloscope just so you can have a quick look at the signal it puts out and uh, I'll just blow through it. There we are, you can see it's just the speed of the wheel spinning inside as it moves past one position it moves the voltage high as it continues to rotate it moves it low. And the faster I blow the closer together the pulses come. So I haven't wired that in yet. Um, now of course these screens here are going to show you how much nutrients have been dispensed and um, we still need another screen for the main menu. So I've got this little 2.2 inch colour TFT for that which I'll work on um, getting that hooked up soon. I'm, I'm, I've ordered a better version of this board that's got 256k of memory which really should be enough for everything I want to do. So I'm going to be using that. Um, oh, I should show you how this is all put together. So these, I've told you that already. Um, so on the back of this, I've just bus wired them together with power ground and the clock signal. And then I've taken each of the data lines off to a pair of displays. Um, I did it on paper because I couldn't be bothered to make a whole circuit board and it didn't really work if I tried to put them on strip board because the connections need to run the opposite way to the pins and strip board didn't really work. So I just resoldered these through the sheet of paper, resoldered the headers on and it holds them all lined up until I get around to making a front panel. And the other bits I've got for this project so far are the EC probe which you saw how I put that together and made this circuit and the pH probe and its circuit that I still haven't got around to mounting onto a circuit board yet. 
Okay, so I'm going to try and explain exactly what I've got in mind here. So, we're starting off with a tank full of old nutrients that needs replacing. Now, the first thing we do is we check what the pH and the EC are for the existing nutrients. Because it's nice to know that, and I'm the sort of person who likes to go, oh look, it's used up half of the food I put in last week. So, that's just for curiosity generally. Um, but it's nice to know. Step two, we need to drain the old nutrients out. And I realised that while we're draining the nutrients out, we could actually measure how much liquid we're draining out of there. Because I'm using a freshwater reservoir, I always have a constant height for my nutrients. So I know how much needs to go in for the next batch. It's the same as went out for the last batch. Um, obviously the alternative is you could just type in the number of litres of liquid that you want, but I thought since I've got the liquid measuring flow sensors, I could actually measure how much was in the container when I pulled the nutrients out. Step three, put in some fresh water. Um, we can take it straight out of the hose pipe, we need some kind of solenoid valve to switch it on and off, but if we measure how much went out, we can measure how much went in, and we know that we need 12 litres, so very convenient, we can actually work out how much we need. And then we need to prepare the water for, so it's ready for the nutrients to go in. So we're going to have to blow some air bubbles through it for an hour or so, and ideally heat it up to about 20 degrees C, and I've got that 500 watt heater which will certainly do the job. So that gets us fresh water in our tanks ready to go. Next up, we need to add our part A nutrient solution. I'm using two part nutrients, A and B, and they're either Vega or Flores. Um, some nutrients call it grow or bloom phases, depending upon what the plant's doing. So, depending upon what plants I'm giving nutrients to, it'll be one or the other of those two. And next up, we need to add the part B solution. And then we add in our root enzyme that breaks down dead roots and turns it into plant food and in our rhizotonic root health promoter, root growth promoter. Um, at certain times during the growing season we'll add in our boost growth accelerator product to make our fruit bigger and more of them. Um, one week in the season when the flowers are just arriving um, can I recommend adding some of their PK1314 to boost potassium and phosphorus levels and once we've added all the right things, we then need to pH balance the solution to uh, somewhere around about 6.0, seems to be pretty much ideal for everything. And at the end of all of that, we stop our air bubbling, we turn off all our pumps, all of everything else, and we play a tune or flash some lights or something like that. Um, that's when it works right. Of course, it's not going to go right, it's going to go wrong. And I'm a great believer that um, if you design things to go wrong, then the fact they work is just because they've run out of different ways to go wrong in. So there's lots of things that can go wrong in this process. Checking the pH and the EC at the start doesn't really matter, it's optional. Um, we could, if we get a ridiculous reading on either beep and flash and alert the user that something is very screwy with the readings, um, it may indicate a calibration problem with the probes. So we probably want to alert the user at that point draining the nutrients and measuring how much we need, um, it turns out those liquid flow sensors I've got are only accurate to plus or minus 10%. So we might drain out 10 litres of liquid and only measure it as 9, and then when we fill with the correct amount of water, we might attempt to put in 9 litres of liquid that we just measured, and actually put in 10% less, so we'd actually only end up with 8.1 litres, so that's pretty bad accuracy on those flow sensors. So I'm looking at a more accurate way of metering the water already. Um, I've found some little load cells on eBay that aren't too unreasonably priced, that'll measure up to 20 kilograms. So I could just measure the water with an electronic scale, something like that, to get an accurate idea of how much I've actually put in there. Quite tempted by that, but I haven't implemented that yet. Um, bubble and heat the water for one hour. Um, it'd be kind of nice at this stage, rather than just doing it for an hour, if we did it until the water was the right temperature. So we probably want to take temperature readings here. 
and in fact we need to know the temperature reading to to um, compensate our pH reading as well because pH changes at temperature. So we've got to measure temperature with this unit as well. Um, bubbling the water for an hour, I'm happy enough to assume that the air pump runs. I'm happy enough to assume that bubbling the water for one hour gets rid of all the chlorine. Adding part A solution, Vega or Flores Glow or Bloom. Oh, the number of things that can go wrong with this. These little peristaltic pumps the silicon tubing wears out on them. Um, it's limited lifespan, it's a consumable, but at some point that tube will split and the pump will stop delivering nutrients. Um, other things that can go wrong, of course, are nutrient tanks at the back can run out. Um, the hoses can be badly positioned, we can be drawing air in instead of liquid, so even if we measure the amount of liquid we've got in this reservoir at the back, it doesn't guarantee we're actually dispensing it out of the front of the peristaltic pumps. So I'm looking into very small size flow sensors. Um, what I'm hoping is I can detect liquid within these tubes or very close to it and I can be sure that um, the liquid's actually on its way out of the pump. And that'll cover all manner of empty reservoirs, bad tubing, anything like that. If I can guarantee that the liquid's actually coming out of the pump, um, I can have a pretty high confidence level that I am actually dispensing the quantity of nutrients that I thought I was. Um, the same applies for all of these other stages here. Now, the other thing that can go wrong here is um, even if we have got liquid in the pipes, the motors can and will burn out at some point. They're brushed motors, so they are going to go wrong. Um, it'd be nice to monitor the current that those motors are pulling, but if I can actually get the output flow of the pump measured, um, that'll cover motor failure conditions as well. The one that particularly concerns me is the idea that perhaps a relay will get stuck on for some reason, um, leaving the pump running continuously and pumping half a litre of nutrients in of any particular one. So um, I'm actually planning on building in kind of a kill switch to the logic in this using the relay boards that I've got. Um, I'm planning on implementing a little watchdog functionality so that my microprocessor has to send a continually changing signal to keep the power enabled to all of these boards. And if at any point the microprocessor stops sending the hey, I'm okay, everything's fine signal, these relays will lose power and the pumps will switch off. Because I can see what's going to happen otherwise is I'll make a mistake in my code and it'll try and dispense far, far, far too much nutrients. Um, I figure as an additional safeguard at this stage, I can continually measure the EC level with my probe as well. If at any stage during this process the EC that we're measuring exceeds the target EC, we know that something has gone wrong and we should kill the power and alert the user. And the same again with dosing the pH out, we can alert the user for problems. Uh, we do also have potential calibration problems with our probe. Um, we shouldn't have mixing problems because we're going to be running our air stone all of this time. And at the end of it, we kill the power again. So this is what I mean by designing for things to go wrong. I'm more concerned, rather than actually worrying about wiring these pumps up and making it dispense nutrients and that kind of thing, I'm rather more concerned at the moment about how I can guarantee that the nutrients have been dispensed in the right quantity to the right places. So that's where I am with the project at the moment folks. I'm still very much in the prototype stage, working out what bits I want to buy and how to use them, um, trying to put kind of the building blocks together so that I'll be able to combine all these different things into one. I'm still not 100% decided on how I'm going to run all of this, what it's going to do, what functionality it's got, but that gives you an idea of what I'm shooting for here. Um, I may not do the liquid in and out measuring, I may just type in a number and say, yeah, this container has 20 litres go. Um, but if I get everything working, then I don't see why not. So I'll keep updates coming as I actually make some progress on this. It's going to be a long term project, um, it's going to take months, possibly years. Um, but that's, that's what I'm tinkering with behind the scenes. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. Cheers folks, see you next time. Bye!